Hey, this is another video by Pet Rock, and today I'm working on my brother-in-law's 07 Shelby Mustang. And today I'm going to be replacing the outer and the inner tie rod on both sides of this vehicle. Although I'm only going to be showing one side because it's the same procedure for both sides. So first thing you want to do is put some penetrating oil around the jam nut as well as around the nut for the tie rod and let them sit for a little while and soak. Okay, once you let it soak for a little while, you take a wrench and put it on the flats on the inner tie rod. Or if you don't have flats and you have a knurled area, you can use vice grips. You hold the inner tie rod in place so it doesn't spin as you loosen the jam nut. Which can be easier said than done. Next, you want to remove this nut. It'll be on there a little bit tight, so it may take a little bit of effort to get it off. To remove the tie rod end from the spindle. However, to do that, the best way is to take a hammer and hit the spindle right here to knock it out. The vibration will cause the tie rod end to just fall out of the tapered hole. Problem is, is that vehicles equipped with ABS sensors or speed sensors on the front end are very sensitive, like this one right here. So it's a good idea to remove this before you start banging on the uh, end of the spindle so that you don't damage this relatively expensive, for what it is, sensor. So put some penetrating oil on the bolt and zip it off. Just take a pair of pliers and, sorry if I'm blocking, but you take a pair of pliers, put it around the housing and rotate back and forth. To break up any rust or anything like that that might be holding the sensor in place so that you can remove it without breaking it. And just wiggle it out of the way. So if you look, even though it's a plastic sensor, there's a lot of dirt and grime and it looks like rust around it that was making it difficult to remove. So you want to hit that with some PB blaster or, or penetrating oil to remove that rust so it makes it easier to remove. So just tuck it up out of the way. Okay, now we can remove the outer tie rod from the spindle. Now if you're just replacing the inner tie rod, you don't want to destroy the outer tie rod. So you don't want to use a pickle fork or anything like that to jam it in there and pry, try and pry it out. You also don't want to hit down on the top of the, of the screw because it can mushroom and then make it so you can't remove it at all without a cutting torch. So the best thing to do is to basically hit what the bolt goes through, which is right here. Take a hammer and just whack it a few times. There we go. So now that the tie rod's out, you can move the spindle out of the way so that you get a little bit more room. Hold the inner tie rod in place and then and then drop your wrench and then rotate this and count the number of times that it rotates so one two three twenty one and about a half or three quarter twenty one about a half three quarter now you want to write that number down so you can remember it when you're putting everything back together again. Now we need to remove the inner tie rod. It's held on by, from the factory, by these metal clips that are supposed to be one-time use, but there are ways of removing it without breaking them. But if you do, it's not a big deal. You can just replace it with a zip tie. So the way I do it is I take a screwdriver of proper form, size and just twist Without pulling it off the clips, ah, this one's gonna pop. Yeah, so it broke it. Oh well, not a big deal. So twist it a couple times to break it free, and then pull it off. We need to get to that thing right there. So now we need to remove this pressure clip on the end of the bellows boot. Not the best camera angle in the world, almost straight up but it's the easiest way to get this off with two hands. So now we can push the bellows boot
down and out of the way so that we can get to that. So now you gotta get a large enough wrench on here. Depending on the manufacturer of the inner tie rod, this nut may be a different size, but in my case, this is a stock one and uh, it's a one and seven sixteenths wrench. And you can just turn it up. Just break it free. No special tools required for that. And there's your prize. So we need to remove this nut so that we can remove the bellows boot and transfer it over to the new inner tie rod. We want to clean out the threads inside the rack to make sure that there's no debris or old Loctite or something like that in there. That'll prevent the new inner tie rod from screwing in there all the way. In my case, it's actually pretty clean, so I don't have to worry about it. So now you want to compare your old to your new inner tie rod. Specifically, you want to compare the length from end to the flat on the back here. The point to that is so that if your new one is longer or shorter, you can adjust the number of turns when installing the outer tie rod to account for the missing or extra threads on the end of the inner tie rod. In my case, they're both the same length, so I don't have to do any extra counting. So now you want to take a little bit of red Loctite, just put a strip of it like that, nothing major, on the threads, snake it into place, and just screw it in. So now just tighten it down as well as you can. You want to get it around 75 foot-pounds, so it's a reasonable amount of force. Now you want to take the bellows boot and just slide it into place. Install the little clamp that goes on the bellows boot. Okay, now you slide the bellows boot over the end of the thing. So now take your zip tie or worm clamp or whatever and install it into place. And there you go, now the boot is secure. Okay, here's your new inner tie rod. This is uh, one made by Moog. So one thing you wanna do is if you look closely, there's a little bit of the top part that's thinner than the rest. You want that facing inward. This is effectively the relief valve. If you pump in too much grease, it's going to relieve it uh, through this slot here. So you want it to be facing inward, not towards the rotor. While you have it off, it should be pretty easy to rotate. Next, you need to install the Zerk fitting that comes with the kit. The hole doesn't actually have threads in it. That's actually normal. Don't think that you have a defective part that's actually supposed to be like that. The threads on the Zerk fitting itself create threads in the hole that it goes into. So make sure that you try to get it in as straight as possible. I find it easiest to insert the Zerk fitting off the vehicle so that I can ensure that I get it in nice and straight and secure. So just Start the threads, double check that it's straight. It's a seven millimeter end. Get it started, lightly turn it. Make sure that you're still going straight. It's gonna to be tough to turn because you're cutting threads as you're turning it. You want it to bottom out. There. So you want it to look like that where it's completely bottomed out. Now, if you're afraid you're gonna damage this while you're trying to install, you can remove it right now, it's no problem because you just created all the threads that you need. In my case, I'm not really worried about it. Next, you need to take the nut that comes with the inner tie rod and spin it on. So you wanna spin it down close to the end. The reason being is you wanna add a little bit of anti-seize to the threads here so that when you tighten this back up again, this nut will go through that anti-seize and be protected by it. There are a couple reasons why you want to use anti-seize here. One is that it makes installing the outer tie rod a lot easier. Two, it makes removing the outer tie rod in the future a lot easier. These things don't last forever, so you, chances are you, if you're going to keep your car for a long time, you might have to replace it again later. So it just makes your life easier. The final and most important, in my opinion, reason is because it makes aligning the vehicle a lot easier. The tech is going to have to rotate the inner tie rod to push the outer tie rod out and in. And if the outer tie rod is rusted onto the inner tie rod, that's not gonna be a very easy thing to do. This is gonna make the alignment a lot harder and it's gonna make the alignment less accurate. So do yourself and your alignment guy a favor and put some anti-seize on the threads here. Doesn't have to be a lot, just put a little bit. That's actually a lot, oops. Now take your inner tie rod and spin it on the same number of turns that it took to remove the old tie rod. Plus or minus any extra or less threads that this inner tie rod has compared to your stock one. In my case, they're the same, so I don't have to add or subtract any threads. I just need to rotate it 21 and 3 quarters. One, 
two, three, four, 21 and three quarter. That's it. Now you take the jam nut and spin it into place. Sorry if I'm blocking. So then you take a wrench and lock the jam nut down. That's it. Now you should be able to rotate the entire assembly to be completely straight up and down. Before, before installing, it's a good idea to put a little bit of chassis grease around the top of the boot. This will allow it to swivel better once it's installed. So it'll have less chance of binding and tearing and premature failure. So stick the tie rod end There you go. Take a little dab of anti-seize, stick it on the threads. That'll make removing it later, if ever need be, a lot easier. Take the castle nut that comes with the tie rod end, spin it down. So now you torque the nut down to 59 foot-pounds. So now I'm not sure if you can see this or not, but there's a hole in the stud that you need to line up with the notches in the castle nut. So if you look just barely out, I can only put part of the cotter pin in there. So I need to tighten this to make the notch line up. Never loosen, always tighten. There we go. Now you take the other end and rotate it up. And there you go, it's all installed. Now don't forget to install the ABS sensor. Because it's plastic, it's a good idea to put a little bit of silicone lubricant on the shaft here so that it'll slide in easier. It won't hurt anything. Clean out the bore that it went into and then slide it into place. Once you've got it in place, put a little bit of anti-seize on the bolt and thread it in. So now you need to grease the tie rod end. So you take your grease gun, attach it to the Zerk fitting, and pump it up. Until it starts to squeeze out like that. So once it's settled down a little bit, just wipe off the excess. I like to take the excess and put it on the threads of the wheel studs. That helps prevent them from seizing up and making it hard to remove if I ever have to on the side of the road, for example. Just a little bit on each on each one. So do the other side now if you need to. It's always a good idea to do these in pairs. If one is on its way out, chances are the other one is pretty darn close. Now that's it. So put the wheel back on, take it straight to an alignment shop. While you may have gotten the alignment close to what it previously was, you definitely didn't get it perfect. So it's best to take it to an alignment shop and have them align it so that everything is running true again. So I hope this video helped you out. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please leave them in the comments section below. If you like this video, please click the like button. If you want to see more videos like it, please subscribe.